what's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online video uh, tonight we are doing the first episode in a brand new series um, called my wormhole workshop uh, hopefully this series will feature um, a few members of disaster area uh, at different points during the series uh, but this episode is just me um, but there have been contributions from others so it's worth mentioning um, but I, uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what the series is supposed to be. Um, basically, um, if you are aware of my channel, you'll know that uh, we live in wormhole space in disaster area. Um, but we have, uh, um, you know, some members that join that know very little about wormhole space, and even some um, more veterans that are, are still learning tips and tricks. I'm still learning a lot of um, things about wormhole space, and so I just thought it would be nice if um, we put out some of the stuff we've learned uh, onto YouTube for everyone else to um, pick some stuff up in a, in a series that we're calling Wormhole Workshop um, and basically it's gonna be the target audience is brand new EVE players it's a complete it's a guide for complete new bros that's the plan anyway um, so it's gonna be really quite detailed um, in some hopefully pretty basic stuff uh, but it'll be it should be really detailed um, but even um, more veteran players hopefully will be able to pick out a couple of uh, useful tips that they just weren't aware of um, and things like that as we go through the series and now um, just the way I want to uh, break down the series is because uh, like all things in EVE wormholes are super complex super complicated there's so much stuff that goes into the mechanics of it so I was thinking about doing a new bro guide in one video but I'd barely ever barely be able to cover anything so I'm gonna break each video down into sections and this first video um, is basically is uh, as you've probably seen from the title of the of the video is uh, the basics of probe scanning and that's because if you're in high sec, you're a, you're a new guy, new new player. You're in high sec. You want to go to wormholes. You need to be able to find a wormhole. That's step one, right? You can't you can't do anything in wormholes unless you can find them. So step one is how to find wormholes and other stuff with your probe scanner probes. Uh, I'm not going to cover fits or anything in this. Um, they might come later in the series but also there are other really good resources for that um, I will um, always recommend um, <coughs> Ashy's blog uh, you, so you should go and check out ashyin.space phenomenal resource um, she runs Foxholders Corporation or Alliance um, we're, we're big fans of them on this channel so go and check them out um, f f but obviously that's a blog and I want to bring you sort of a visual representation of a lot of these things um, so just to start with I'm in I'm cloaked up uh, as you can see in my Stratios um, and I'm already in a wormhole because we live in wormholes so it's actually easier for me to record these series from inside wormhole space instead of doing it in high sec um, but all the mechanics are the same and obviously once you're in a wormhole you'll need to use the same mechanics to get around inside the wormholes so it's useful me being in here uh, and so basically I'm assuming you've done the career agents um, and if you haven't I recommend you go and do the career agents it's a really good way to learn the game and they just take a couple of sessions uh, to get through them all and it, it does teach you some of the basic mechanics we'll recover some of it here but um, you know, I'm assuming you're in at least a T1 exploration frigate, like a Heron or an Imicus or something, and you have um, a, sca uh, a core probe launcher and scanner probes that, uh, on your ship. That's uh, that's the absolute basics that I'm assuming you're gonna you've already got, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, so the place to start, and actually, I should probably. Uh, refit my window a little bit because this is how I have my window set up all the time um, we've got D scanner which is really important that's hot black trying to get in on the get in on the action already that's my CEO um, got D scan which is a really really important tool and there'll be a whole other video on that 
um, probably in episode two or three of uh, this series. So I'm not going to touch on that now, but it's really, really important. Um, but what we've got for this episode is our probe scanner, which normally isn't here. Um, it is for me, because that's where I keep it. But uh, if you're new and haven't done exploration yet, that won't be there, neither will your D-scan. Um, and in order to find your probe scanner, which again is the first thing, <laughs> you go down here, you've got scanners on the icons. If you hold that down and go left, that's your probe scanner. Open that up, and obviously my, mine comes up here. But the way yours will likely come up is, I think when you first join the game, looks something like this right which is uh, in, in my opinion fairly gross uh, you know if I close this window now my probe scanner's gone got no map or anything obviously so you just do that and get it back up but you know that's I don't that's not for me I don't like that I like to have my probe scanner up all the time so I um, I click this to open it in a separate window and then move it down here you can just then move it around um, and if you uh, pit it it makes it slightly see through so you can see what's a little bit of what's happening in space behind whereas if it's not pinned it's uh, solid grey so again I like to have it pinned and then you've got your map just floating uh, this is personal preference um, some people like to have it uh, solid in the, like this in their screen uh, but floating uh, and for me it depends on what I'm doing at the time but my personal preference most of the time is to set it to full screen and have it in the background behind all my other windows um, and then I can whilst I can't see what's happening directly in space I've still got a full view of my overview you know I can still control my drones if I need to and I've got my D scan uh, open so I can I'm still aware of everything that's happening around me um, just because I can't see it but I like to have the map up big but that's that's just personal preference um, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing at the moment, uh, again, this this is all part of D-Scan, which will be covered in another video. But because I'm in wormhole space, it's important that I'm doing it. So every time you see like this pulse green or hear me hit a, hit a key on my keyboard, it's because I'm just checking D-Scan to make sure I'm um, not about to die immediately. Uh, which I guess is another important thing to cover in wormholes. Um, they're incredibly dangerous. Awesome fun. Uh, love living in them, but they're they're ridiculously dangerous, right? Everyone in wormholes place is trying to kill you. If you come across anyone, they probably are trying to kill you. Um, or if you're a hunter, you come across someone, you're trying to kill them. You know, that's just how wormhole space works. Um, and what I won't dedicate a whole video to, so it's worth mentioning here if you don't already know, um, wormholes have no local chat. So it, you know it will say. That you've changed a local system with the wormhole name but there could be 50 people in this system and I'd have no idea it doesn't doesn't populate in wormholes um, you can you can talk you can chat and your name will come up for sort of 10 minutes or so 10 15 minutes and then it would disappear again and everyone in the system will be able to see what you said but unless someone speaks you've got no idea who's in the system so you can't use local chat as an intel tool um, so basically you just have no idea who's in the system with you at any any moment um, which is what again why we use dscan um, but I'll touch on that later I, need to, I keep going back to dscan because it's a really important tool but it's it's too we're too early in the series um, and you basically so if, if anyone's cloaked like I am you just can't see them they basically don't exist <laughs> and they can come and kill you so just bear that in mind but we are assuming we're in high sec and we're looking for a wormhole right that's 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 what we're doing so we have opened up our probe scanner using this and we've set the probe scanner up how we want and we can see everything that's in the system so you've got combat anomaly uh, combat you've got co uh, cosmic anomalies um, just like you do in high sec um, in wormholes uh, which you know there'll be combat sites or they can be um, ore sites or they can be um, what else that might be it I think, that, I think that's it 
Um, although in high sec, obviously they can be uh, beacons or other stuff as well. But they're cosmic anomalies, and uh, to find a wormhole, you need your cosmic signatures. So a wormhole will always be a cosmic signature, which you need to scan down. So one thing we can do to make this stuff slightly tidier. Oh, by the way, for combat anomalies, you don't have to scan these down. You can just warp straight to them. I'm not going to do that now because I, I warped somewhere dangerous. But you can just click that button and you warp to it. Or you can right click and choose to warp within a certain range. Um, but we don't need those to find a wormhole. We need the signatures. So what we can do is you can filter out to tidy it up and make it easier to scan things down. Um, uh, you can filter them out so we would turn off cosmic anomalies and one of the reasons you do that is just to tidy up your map um, because the cosmic anomalies are all in here in green um, and the cosmic signatures are red because they're not scanned down they're these red circles if I highlight them um, that's because they're not scanned down yet once you've scanned them down they become a green signature that looks just like these. So it's useful to get rid of those so that you don't confuse um, uh, a, a, new, a freshly scanned signature with a pre already existing anomaly. So um, I like to fill them out and up here it will tell you what's, uh, how much um, or how many things you've got filtered at any given moment. Um, so if I, you know, if I, f I could cho also choose to filter out the signatures, and that would get rid of everything, and tell me there are 14 items filtered. So that is um, that, and now let's go through some of the mechanics on. No, we'll go through mechanics on the map in just a second. Next thing we want to do is just have a quick conversation around um, the scanning strength of our ships because that's also quite important um, primarily just because it can help with the speed of scanning and so you can change up how you choose to scan based on the strength of your of your probes um, again if you're in a T1 frigate with low skills your numbers are going to be pretty low and so you want to go through every step but when you're in a covops, uh, cover ops um, ship like a buzzard or in an astero or something like that your um, probe scanning numbers go much higher. In my Stratios, uh, I'm a, they're a little bit low. I'm a bit sad about it, but um, they're still pretty good. And so the way you can find out your scanning strength is if you hover over here, over over your um, probes, you can see where it says base sensor strength, 96 points. That that's your your strength. There's 96 points there, and that is all based on skills. Um, and things and and the types of probes you're using and the scan probe launcher um, and the ship and things because you can see here base sensor strength for the sisters scanner probes is uh, 44 points which is obviously quite low but is also higher than basic ones because they're faction ones um, and then with all the added bonuses um, my strength goes up to 96 because let's have a quick look the probe launcher adds 10%, so that would add another 4.4 on. Uh, and the ship um, is also bonused. Uh, or is it not? Yeah, okay. 37.5% um, bonus to um, scanner probe strength as well. So when you combine all of those, uh, you end up. and. Um, your skills do it as well. Um, is it scanning? I can't remember where they are. Scanning, here we go. Seems I've got pretty high skills in scanning. Um, and they, they get you go. Astrometric range finding adds strength per level. Um, archaeology? No. Yeah, so, you know, they're. Um, they're uh, important things to have as well. Um, and all that means basically is is the strength of your probe, so how quickly and how effectively you can scan down a signature. Uh, I think, but almost with any probe strength, you, you'll eventually be able to scan down a signature that's um, scanning difficulty 1 to 3. 
I think you only start getting into issues if you've got scanning difficulty four or five. Um, you won't know the scanning difficulty until you start scanning something down. Um, so, for example, if I hover over this, you can see it gives me the name of the signature, the distance away, and then scanning difficulty unknown. Um, you once you start scanning it down, it will come. It will tell you how difficult it is to scan, and you can then almost work out whether it's worth you scanning down the signature. Uh, because if you're in high, if you're in a T1 frigate with low scan strength, and you're in high sec, and you get a scanner difficulty level four or five, you're probably not going to be able to finish it off. So there's not much point trying. Um, that being said, if you're looking for a wormhole, I don't know this for sure, but I'm confident that 90%, like unless they're special wormholes, 90% um, of wormholes will come up, will be level uh, scanning difficulty one to three. Um, so you should be able to scan them down eventually. But we're 15 minutes in and I haven't even launched my probes yet. So um, we will crack on a little bit. I, um, I did say this was going to be detailed uh, and I hope I, I'm still confident confident I'm missing stuff out um, so that is worth mentioning if anyone watching uh, has any other hints and tips and stuff um, or any questions uh, please comment below uh, I will do my best to answer them and any uh, obviously any viewer that that knows the answer can also um, help out and drop an answer in there as well so please do that um, I want to th this is this video is to help people out so please make use of it right but we're here now this is what we're we're doing I am gonna jump into now uh, launching the probes and scanning so you can't launch your probes while cloaked even in covert ops so I need to make myself unsafe 15 seconds so I'll decloak and launch my probes and this will automatically reload with um, probes that are in my cargo hold um, and you'll see your probes come up on the map and they also come up in your overview if you've got your things set right I'm going to re, re cloak and I'm also just going to start moving just in case someone is warping to me right this is what happens when you've launched your probes um, I think this is the default position it's always been the default for me anyway um, there's some stuff moving, I just need to make sure I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Good. Um, so let's get the map back up. By the way, uh, once you've got your probe scanner docked like this, you can access the map just by clicking there, and then it will come back up. Um, so, yeah, this is the default position for the scanner probes, I believe, um, which is... Uh, 4 AU scan size which we'll talk about in a second and is in pinpoint formation which again I'll talk about the formations in a second um, but then also in your probe scanner window there's some important information you've got up here um, you can see how many um, probes you've got in space which should more or less always be eight I've, I don't even know if it's possible to launch less than eight um, and it also tells you, once you hover over that figure, how long until your probes are going to expire and disappear from space if you leave them out there. All right, so I've got one hour, five minutes, which hopefully this video won't go on for that long. But if it does, I'll need to remember to pull them back in or I'll lose them. Um, if you pull them back in and relaunch them, it resets the timer. So if you do have them out for a long time for whatever reason, you can just pull them back in and relaunch and you're good to go. Um, then you've got your scan strength um, and how uh, and you can see where all the bonuses come from so same as just hovering over here that gives you a rounded base strength you can get the details here once you've launched your probes so you can see most of the bonuses come from my skills there's a little bit from modules and ship but you can also have them uh, heavily boosted by implants as well um, and the ship does make a big difference so the cover ops ones I think have a bigger have like 50% bonus uh, here is the scan deviation honestly I'm not 100% sure what that means but the smaller the better 
right you want to reduce your scan deviation um, reduce the possible location areas of each scan okay so what that is going to mean is um, when you scan a site down which we'll do in a second um, basically the center point of the scan the likelihood of that being the location um, improves obviously with your scanning accuracy but it moves around a little bit so we'll, we'll, you'll see it happen as I do it shortly but it moves around and basically the lower this value the less it is likely to move around and be a problem to scan down and then you've also got your scan duration um, so this is the time it takes to perform each scan uh, again the smaller the better you you want to be able to scan things down quickly um, I've never been that bothered by this but if you're going to run wormhole defense which again which will come much later in the series um, you want to get these numbers as quick as possible because you need to race people to be able to scan things down so that's uh, that's this top part then you've got your signatures which we discussed and then the formations which we'll talk about um, down here so it, um, you have pinpoint formation which is this formation here um, which if I what button should I press to get that to show up mm. can't remember but basically you've got your eight probes are launched in this formation so each each probe is producing one of these spheres and there are eight spheres forming this cluster um, you can uh, that's what the pinpoint formation is you can launch a spread formation which is makes it a bit more a bit clearer um, how you've got uh, each probe with its own sphere and two of them in the middle which makes eight total and now uh, in this formation the default is 16 AU and basically it gives you um, a sort of an overview of scanning down the system with core scanner probes I never use this formation um, I again it's personal preference you could use this to help like sort of target where you're going to scan initially but I I don't it's personal preference and I'm not going to use it now because it will mess up the map a little bit for me um, or you can set your own formation and then save it which which will do there it's a long message um, right so I'm gonna go back to pinpoint formation and we're gonna go through some a uh, little bit of information and some hotkeys uh, but first thing most signatures you see uh, that come up will have a, an initial like sphere of possibility of 8 AU uh, diameter I think it's diameter um, so you know that means the, sig the signature you're trying to scan down could be anywhere in this sphere and that normally is 8 AU in high sec uh, well, in, in known space um, there's a few uh, different examples sometimes there'll be some cases where it's 16 AU some cases where it's 4 um, but in uh, for the most part there'll be 8 uh, and in wormholes I've only I think I've never seen a f I think I've only seen 8s so I think in wormholes they're only 8 and if they're not then they're very rare so um, so again it's what a lot of what I'm going to show you will be the way I like to do it which again is personal preference and definitely isn't I'm not going to claim it's best practice um, there will be people that can scan a lot faster and more effectively than me uh, and so pay attention to them um, but I just this is how I like to do it when I'm being kind of chilled um, so a quick disclaimer there but there are a few things uh, that you can note um, whilst we do this what I'm just going to do is filter these out again so that the maps clear move that over to one side and I can turn my get rid of my D scanner just for a second so that the maps pretty clear um, you can see the solar system uh, can I turn off the there again turn off tactical overlay this is what the solar system looks like that I'm in right you've got in the middle you've got your star you've got several planets in orbits going out with their associated moons 
which you can hover over and so on and so on so that's the solar system um, I have the tactical overlay on which so it has my ship at the center of it but I'm going to turn that off for now because it makes it look a bit messy that's the solar system okay uh, you when you're in wormholes you'll always have your D scan on so on your map you'll have this green section which is your D scan um, and they're your probes and then also you'll obviously have your cosmic signatures so that's the red blobs excuse me so that that's what we're what we're looking at um, just a quick overview for you there um, to navigate around the map uh, I this is uh, you can right click to just pan around um, right click and hold and left click and hold to rotate the map in any direction but you can get lost so um, if we go to the vertical um, and let's use the Sun as um, as uh, the, the thing we're going to look at for now no, no, no let's, let's use this signature I don't know why I want to use the Sun let's use this signature JKC oh, if we want to set that so right now you know it's over to one side if we want to focus on that you just have to left click it once and it becomes the middle of your map um, you can zoom in and out with the scroll on your mouse so you zoom in and out um, and if you want proof that it stays the middle of your map uh, you can then rotate around it and you can see that JKC is the central focus so that's a couple of useful bits and then uh, one more that's really nice and useful for scanning is if you then double click anywhere in space but you can um, just double click it'll go from vertical to horizontal so just swap planes and double click and you'll go back so that you're perfectly like above and then beside the the signature um, so that's a, a little bit of the mechanics of the map and and how to move move yourself around a little bit uh, if you want to move your probes um, you just grab uh, you can either grab the arrows and move them just in that plane right so if I grab this arrow here the probes will only move left and right if I try and move them up and down they won't go similarly if I grab these it goes up and down but won't go left and right so you can use them if you want to stay in the same plane or you just grab this side and it will move anywhere in a 2d plane so um, just to prove that if I um, double click you'll see that we're a little bit below the center of JKC if I go back up move it around and go back down we're still a little bit lo below JKC and then the same happens from this angle you can grab the side and just drag it around and so that's basically how you move that um, I'm starting to jump uh, jump around a little bit all over the place so I hope this is all still making sense um, but now for scanning if you're trying to scan down something that's 8 AU big you'll want your probes to be 8 AU big as well at least you could go bigger could go 16 but for me I like to just go to 8 AU big um, make sure that's centered and then drag the probes over the center of the um, signature so from above we're lined up double click and side on we're lined up double click just to check above and we're perfectly lined up now so now if we want to scan you can hit analyze um, which is how you do the scan but you can also see that um, there's a hotkey there where it says for fresh probe scan and then B that's the hotkey that you can use to scan um, so I always use my hotkey so I'll press uh, B after this to scan it down and you should hopefully see after 6.8 seconds where it's all scanning lovely visuals we start to focus in on the location right so it's no longer a sphere that we're looking at and it has made itself 
this annoying thing. So when it does this, um, it means uh, let me move this out. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the probes here for a second, but let me filter out all the other si uh, signatures, which you can do by. Uh, well, I can do it this way. I want to keep this one and nothing else. You can go ignore other results, and then it'll go into ignored. Um, so now we've just got this one we're looking at, which I should have done earlier. I apologise for not. I'm going to leave my probes where they are for now while I explain this. So just try and ignore them for a second. When it does this, you've got the progress bar going around the side of the circle. That's the 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 percentage with which you've successfully scanned it down, which is also covered over here. So signal is 10.9% strength. We we still have no idea what the signature is because we don't get uh, that type until we get to 25% scan strength. Um, so uh, hope, you sort of hope on your first scan that um, the this won't happen and you'll get one option to go and scan down. Still with the same strength, but one option. On this occasion, if I don't know why this happens, but it's chosen two. Um, and the way you work out which one of these you want to go and zoom in on is basically if you can tell if if this was the correct location it falls right in the middle of all of your probes and so you would be confident that like your probes would be confident that that was the correct location and so because that's in the middle of your probes and it's not confident you know that's not the location so it has to be down here on the edge of some of your probes so that's how I narrow that down so we'll just focus in over here again and we will move our probes over to this one and then because we've had one successful scan we want to now reduce the size of our area of scanning so you can either move it down to 4AU here or you can use hotkeys to do this as well which makes things a lot easier and faster so for me um, if I press ALT which you'll see when you hold ALT down these will come up. You can either press ALT and, and move it yourself with um, with the mouse click or you can hold ALT and just scroll once. So that will scroll back, that scroll up, scroll down and it goes down to 4 AU. And so make sure you're centered on that again. That's what I like to do. You don't actually have to be centered which I'll cover when we scan down the next signature. Hit B or hit Analyze and it will run again. And what it should do is focus in again on the scanning down here. If we've picked incorrectly, nothing will change. But we didn't pick incorrectly. And now, as your confidence in the scan um, goes up, uh, it changes color. So when, as you reach a certain threshold, it changes color. And because we've gone above 25%, we know the type of site. And this is a gas site. Um, Obviously, if you're looking for wormholes in high sec, you would now potentially move on. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to finish scanning this down. But if you're looking for a specific type of signature, so we're in high sec looking for wormholes, you would go, okay, this isn't a wormhole, and you can just ignore it and move on to the next one. Um, but we'll finish scanning this one down. Um, you can see now, by the way, that it says scanning difficulty level 1, so you should have no problem scanning this site down at any point. Um, just rinse and repeat basically so make sure that's in the center drag your probes in double clicking to drag it around alt down B and it's scanning again 6.8 seconds and then scan signal it might go to 100% it, it roughly doubles every time um, but for some sites it goes up a lot uh, faster than that but it roughly doubles every time. That's the general rule of thumb I go by. And so we've now successfully scanned down this gas site. Um, you get the full full type here. It's a minor perimeter reservoir, which you could then go and look up uh, online if you want to find out any details about it. Um, and we can now, just like the anomalies, you can now just warp to it or warp to range or, or bookmark the result, which is another... Um, very important part of exploration which I 
we'll cover in another video I think this is we're already at 35 minutes so bookmarking is going to be in a separate video but it's really important so uh, make sure you do uh, like stick around for the series to work out how to, to learn how to do that properly and have any useful tips um, but this is this video is really dragging on so I apologize <laughs> but we're gonna scan down another one so um, let's just clear all ignored for a second um, we'll ignore this one I'm also going to ignore these two because they're already partially scanned down and we will pick another one so you can see they're all spread out again and they're nice and big so I want to make my scan 8AU again um, so a couple of things that are worth noting I don't know this for sure but a lot of people have told me and I've, when you test it it sort of turns out to be true um, signatures should always be within 4 AU of a celestial body so this signature for example uh, CAV obviously it looks like it's big 8, 8 AU thing but it's got a the signature's got to fall somewhere in here and actually has to fall within 4 AU of one of these celestials and it's only can only be these so basically you know that it should actually be just somewhere around here um, let's uh, ignore 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 because we're going for this one it should be somewhere around here because it's got to be close to the celestial within 4 AU so if you really wanted to um, you could make your scan 4 AU and put it near the celestial and you should find the thing quicker which I will do I will just test here just to see if it if it really does work um, I don't do this very often I normally just scan down a bit slower and do the process I did for the first one every time but this is just a, a potential tip that can save you some time and you can test yourself there we go so we've come in here a little bit and we're at 18 AU 18% sorry so let's scan it down alt down B and we'll scan it um, I do want to find a wormhole I do know where there's one because I've already got it bookmarked but I do want to find another wormhole here we go there's another wormhole for us so make sure that centered so every time basically it doesn't matter where your probes are every time center that and then bring your probes in when you start getting small you want to zoom in just to make sure that you're centered properly double click double click to check alt scroll back B and then it will scan and this time again we're at 49.5 at 1 AU scan size so it should double to complete basically and this time we're at 1 AU um, the smallest your scan probes can go by the way is 0.25 AU and you can't you can't scan any smaller than that um, but one thing you can do that's just worth mentioning um, is if you get a signature that's particularly hard to scan down uh, so maybe a level five or a level four if uh, if you're in a ship with um, slightly weaker scan strength what you can do is press con hold control and scroll and it just brings the formation that bit tighter so that can just sort of improve your accuracy that little bit if you if you need to so that's just worth bearing in mind and if you want to get back out to the original one you can either have your formation saved or just go launch pinpoint and it's in, this, it's in the right formation again so that's control and scroll uh, whereas alt and scroll just does that one but so we've successfully scanned down a wormhole um, when you scan a wormhole down this is all the information you get in your probe scanner you will just get the signature ID the distance away and that it's an unstable wormhole and we've got scan strength level 2 here which is what um, it says next to wormhole level 2 that's the, the difficulty it was to scan down so we've got a wormhole we're happy we're going to go and look at it um, first thing to do when you're finished scanning is make sure you recover your active probes click that and they'll come back in if you look over here currently I've got 8 if I click it I've now got 16 again because my 8 probes in space have come in if you forget to do that they're gone 
and if you're using faction probes that can eventually become an expensive way of just spending money um, so we've got our wormhole that we want to go and look at uh, close the map uh, if you want to or you can just warp to it directly and again you can just warp to it using this warp to or warp to within uh, if I am warping to a wormhole for the first, if I'm in wormhole space and warping to a wormhole for the first time uh, and I want to go and find that stuff out about it and bookmark it and things I'll warp to within 100 if you're in high sec that's less important because unless they're a ganker and I don't know why gankers would really camp wormholes necessarily and especially if you're in a cheap T1 frigate it's not worth it for them you can just scan direct, uh, warp directly to the wormhole and look at it um, but that will decloak me and I'm in wormhole space so I'm not going to do that so I'll just warp to within 20 for now warp drive active and we are warping to the wormhole and that's what we wanted to achieve this video right we have found a wormhole we've used our probe scanner we've learned some tips and tricks which hopefully I've covered some of there are loads more um, like everything we've just done has got hotkeys and um, could be hotkeyed that's how I like to scan but other people scan differently um, and so if you've got other tips that you want to add this is supposed to be educational so please just share them in the comments um, don't bash what I've done because I appreciate it's not the most efficient way it's just how I like to scan and I've been obviously going quite slowly to try and inform um, other people but if you've got if you've got any recommendations and tips please leave them in the comments so other people can read them um, if you've watched this video and have any questions also please leave comments I would be delighted to help you out and so would my court mates if they um, are on the channel they can help you out in comments and things I'm sure I've missed stuff but we're 42 minutes into the video and uh, I don't want to bore you all to death because we've <laughs> so far we have found a wormhole that's how this that's sort of the level of detail I want to go to in this in this episode in this um, series sorry the next episode um, will either be on descanning uh, and we'll do quite a detailed one on descanning so that'll be a whole episode there will be an episode that contains bookmarking um, because that's another important thing especially now that we have found a wormhole we want to bookmark the entrance so that we don't have to walk back to it all the time sorry so that we don't have to scan it down if ever we want to walk back to it um, but also really importantly is how to identify where you're going so what the wormhole is by there's a whole host of ways to identify the wormhole which we will also cover in a video really soon that might be the next episode um, it may be descanning um, but things like just things like this those are the the 0477 that gives you loads of information info there's loads of information in here about what to do when you look at the wormhole there's loads of information just based on how it looks right and so there's a whole video again based on just ident how to identify where you're going just by looking at a wormhole so that's gonna that'll be really soon as well um, and that's before we get into all the rest of stuff once you're inside a wormhole <laughs> um, so hopefully you found this informative um, I hope it hasn't just bored you to death um, which is my concern especially at this early stage um, if you're new to if you're new to Eve and new to wormholes welcome please come on in um, we always want more wormholers uh, reach out to me in game uh, you'll see my name uh, well you probably saw my name but it's um, the name of the channel uh, what ender ass is my in-game name as well just in case there you go what ender ass reach out to me in game if you want to if you want to chat um, or ask any questions and yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed this the series will continue um, and if you did please give it a like subscribe if you want to see more of the series um, my hope is it becomes a useful way of getting in please do check out Ashy Ashy in dot space her blog is phenomenal um, she is my go-to on wormhole stuff 
and some of my videos will be informed heavily by her thing um, so just as the, the one I mentioned about how to identify stuff in wormholes uh, sorry how to identify where wormholes go by looking at them and things I will basically be using her blog um, but with uh, but but with my screen up so that basically you can visualize what she's written down but I, I'll be I'll be frank about that um, but yeah as I say I'm now I'm just waffling so thanks for watching guys I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next one cheers